Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. On behalf of Riot, we are so excited to have the Aurora Group and Ernie Electronics here with us today. My name is Caroline Griffin. I am Riot's Director of Operations, and I have just a couple of quick reminders for you before I turn it over to Aperna with Aurora Group. If you are not speaking, please do keep yourself muted throughout the event. We will give you an opportunity to unmute and ask any questions out loud after the presentation is over. This presentation will be recorded and posted to Riot's YouTube channel and the meetup group to which you registered for the event. Um, we will also be sharing out the presentation along with the recording after the event, so be on the lookout for that. One last reminder, if you have any questions throughout the event, please do place those in the chat box. Aurora group um, will be helping answer any questions specifically of Perna here. Um, so those questions will be answered throughout the presentation. And if we don't get to your question, we will make sure to get to it at the end. Without further ado, I know you guys are all here to see Aurora group and Ernie. So I'll hand it over to Aperna. Thank you for being here today. Thanks, Caroline, for the kind introduction. As Caroline mentioned, my name is Aperna Spralik. I'm with the Aurora group and we represent and support a variety electromechanical component manufacturers. And today we're presenting this lunch and learn session together with Ernie Electronics, who are the manufacturers of internet interconnect solution connectors. We know these days connectors for power and control applications are practically used everywhere. Miniaturization for connectors with reliable, robust long-term usage is key for IoT. We will get deeper into the technical details on interconnect design features to consider for your applications. But first, a bit about the Aurora Group. The Aurora Group, we have been representing and supporting manufacturers for over 30 years in the Southeast. The Aurora Group is committed to facilitating technical component solutions for OEMs, CMs, engineers, manufacturers, anyone who's building something new. Technical advice, we offer technical advice and support quality manufacturers of components, of course. We guide through the technical challenge of new and existing product solutions as well as custom solutions. And we act as component liaisons for quote order samples expediting on behalf of the manufacturers and customers. The technical support, technical components that we support range all over the place. We're anywhere from capacitors, transformers, motors, touchscreens, mechanical parts, and of course, connectors. If you don't see a component on the list, just call us and we'll see if we can help you out. Here is a view of our coverage on the East Coast. We're primarily focused on the Southeast. Here's our look at our team in the Southeast. They've been in the industry for a long time and you may even recognize some of these familiar faces. We got Bob Kirkland, Bob Ball, Ken and myself that cover the Carolinas, Bruce covers Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, and Karen covers Georgia. And of course, Kathy Hill is an inside sales manager and she touches everything. We are very well connected with many organizations. Here is a look of all the components that we support. Here are many of the organizations that we're also involved with uh, in our geographic area. We are especially proud to be a sponsor of the Riot. Carolyn and her team do a fantastic job in networking, connecting across multiple industries. So you'll see us pop up everywhere as well as uh, Carolyn and the Riot. And of course, we love and enjoy working with all our distributor friends. So today, as I mentioned, we will be presenting on Interconnect for IoT, Ernie, Electronics manufactures a variety of connectors, board to board, wire to board, IO and power connectors. Here to present together from Ernie is Jason Rowe and Patty. Jason is a graduate of VCU electrical engineering program and has been with the Ernie Electronics for over 20 years. He's held a lot of different positions there and he knows everything about electronics and connectors from Ernie. He is currently the head of engineering electronic at Ernie Electronics. As you will hear today, Jason loves to teach connector technology. He is located at the Ernie Americas headquarters in Virginia. And Patty is a graduate of the University of Pittsburgh the mechanical engineering program and is currently responsible for sales in the mid-Atlantic Southeast regions. 
and she has been in the connector industry for most of her career. So she is familiar with all types of connectors. Patty is located in the DC area. And when we're over the pandemic, she'll be visiting us, I hope. I will be monitoring the chat box. So feel free to add, ask any questions. I will be interrupting the speakers just so we get those questions answered real time. If we don't get to them, we'll get to them later. And now I'd like to turn the presentation over to Patty from Ernie Electronics. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, on behalf of Ernie Electronics, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time and your participation in this Lunch and Learn today. Um, we are very excited to have this opportunity to speak with you. Um, as a uh, partner said, Jason's going to do a little teaching, uh, you get an idea of what we know about Internet of Things, and again, you know, um, give you some solutions for some problems that you might be having. So many of you may have not have heard of Ernie before. Um, this may be the first time that you're, you have heard uh, Ernie mentioned as a connector or interconnect supplier. But we are actually a very well-established company. Um, it was established in the mid, uh, mid 19, 1900s or the mid, I should say mid 20th centuries, like around 1950 um, in Europe by uh, Ernst and Elsa Ernie, who are Swiss. Um, in 1968, we introduced the, um, the DIN products, which at that time were a new and uh, exciting product that was meant to solve a customer's problem for backplane interconnect. Um, currently, we are still a company, a family owned company. Uh, our, um, Earth's grandson, Hans, is now the chairman of the board, but we have evolved into a global company. So we have production engineering and sales in many locations um, in the Americas in Europe and in the Asia Pacific region. We work hard to um, create relationships with our customers. Um, we feel that the best way to develop our business is to focus on our customers, develop needs, for, develop products that meet the needs of our customers. We're focusing on miniaturization as well as rugged and robust connectors that will deliver signal and power for all industries. In the future, we want to continue to work with our customers, extend our reach and our support, and, and partner with our clients and customers, because we believe that together we do achieve more. Here's just an overview of some of the applications um, that Ernie Connectors go into. As you can see, this is very diverse. Uh, I'm not going to go through every one of them. Um, but you can see things that are relevant to the Internet of Things are going to be in the transportation space, industrial automation, um, medical, um, as well as lighting and, of course, tele and data communications. Um, I'm going to let Jason go into some more details there. Um, but just for a, um, a fun reference, that lighting picture is actually a uh, nighttime view of the city of Raleigh. And with that, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Jason uh, and... Uh, if you guys have any questions, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aperna and, and Patty for the uh, introduction. And I, I wish I could say I knew everything about electronics, but uh, uh, I'm still learning. So um, I'd like to start my presentation by kind of looking back at how the, the role of connectors really evolved as these industrial revolutions have taken place. As we're on the cusp of the next industrial revolution, uh, industry 4.0, um, connectors have historically played a, a significant role in uh, the development of uh, industrialization. And being in the second industrial revolution, the first, the first uh, separable connector was developed in 1904. And, and towards the end of the, the second industrial revolution, Ernie was founded. And along with that, uh, between the, the second industrial revolution and the third industrial revolution, there was this uh, need for globalization and uh, this information age began uh, with the third industrial revolution where information needed to be uh, transmitted and, and sent around the world. And the development of the backplane connector was, was developed in 1960. And then further along, we see this evolution of, of electronics, the, inf the infrastructure, the ICs and um, uh, chips and transistors that uh, uh, helped to foster the, the internet age. 
um, which really was a heyday for connector development. And as we're now on this cusp of the industry 4.0 connectors will continue to, to play a, an important role, uh, whether that's into machine to machine communication or internet of things. The internet of things is truly everywhere. It's here in our world right now and it's only gonna continue to grow at a very rapid rate uh, as we go into the next decades. It's gonna influence uh, everything from how we drive and where we shop and uh, what we do at work and how do we live our lives. Um, it's, and history tells us that connectors are gonna be part of that and, and play a pivotal role. So. What do, we, what do we need to overcome as part of the, this uh, next industrial revolution? So the first thing that uh, is of, of importance in IoT systems of the future is the need for high-speed connections. So with the uh, deployment of 5G network systems that are going into, into service now, uh, data rates are increasing dramatically from single gigabits per second data to up to 10 gigabit per second as, uh, as the 5G deployment uh, continues. But designers are even thinking about how do I go beyond 10, 10 gigabits to 25 gigabits or even, even further. And as we increase this, um, this data speed and the, the frequency that we're operating at, the, there is an increased importance uh, that needs to be placed on the signal integrity of the connector. So, uh, things like impedance matching and um, crosstalk, near-end and far-end crosstalk. These, um, these components are critical to the connector designs and uh, IoT deployments of the future. So what I mean by the signal integrity um, features, but we found that um, open pin field connectors, like we see here in our, in our microspeed product family, offer a great opportunity for you as the designer to dedicate your signal to ground ratios, uh, your, your allotment of single, uh, signal and ground pins to match the performance that you're looking for in your system. So whether you're doing a, a single ended 50 ohm um, uh, system or a differential system operating at 85 or 100 ohm um, uh, impedance, you can allocate the signals uh, in your connector routing in order to achieve that, uh, that impedance. This is a very critical area in uh, achieving those high speed uh, data transmissions, minimizing reflections, um, optimizing your throughput. Additionally, things to think about um, and what we've employed in some of our connector systems is advanced shielding technology. So integrated uh, shielding in the connectors that Re further reduce crosstalk effects from near end and far end. And understanding though that not only uh, is crosstalk generated by um, uh, external influences in the environment, but also from the internal routing of the, the signals onto the printed circuit boards, which leads us to one of the challenges, uh, the next challenges that uh, we feel are, are important in these new IoT uh, deployments. The fact that these designs are trending to be smaller, much smaller designs, but the complexity is increasing. And the dense of the need for dense SMT connectors is, is truly um, a key trend for, uh, for the future. So board real estate is at a premium, um, but we're, uh, increasing complexity. So there's signal routing optimization that needs to happen and flexibility with the different pin counts and stacking heights. With, with SMT connectors, you've, you've got a great opportunity to utilize more of the board real estate. So connectors that have this uh, SMT uh, construction allow you to use the opposite side of the printed circuit board for placement of components, um, for uh, additional routing that may need to, to happen. Um, the, the other key features is um, the, the fact that we can produce reliable connectors in pitches down to um, 0.8 millimeters. So we're, we're shrinking down into the fine pitch component range. This gives you the density when you need it, 
um, and the ability to, to scale as, uh, as your system allows. So having connectors with a broad range of, of connector sizes, so from very small um, to, to uh, larger pin fields, multiple, row, uh, multiple rows of contacts um, allows you to, to have a lot of flexibility and scalability in your system. Additionally, uh, adopting connector systems that have uh, the ability to, um, to uh, cover a wide range of stack heights so that you can uh, clear different components that may be on your printed circuit boards is, is another area that uh, is uh, very important. But small footprints also need very um, maximum forgiveness in, in the system design. So uh, a pitch, a connector with a pitch of 0.8 millimeters needs to be able to have some um, misalignment tolerance or the ability to, to uh, withstand boards that are not mated perfectly in, in exact alignment. So they can gather the board and, and bring it back into uh, to the proper orientation. So, um, Choosing connector solutions that, that allow this forgiveness um, in both the X and, and Y directions is important. Also, um, having um, advanced chamfers and, and lead-in features that allow for uh, angular inclination of the boards and you know, a zippering effect um, for mating and unmating is, is critical. When once you put those all together in the, uh, the footprints, you can start to, to realize solutions where you localize the placement of the connectors nearby where, where the signals are needed. So you get shorter runs, you can reduce um, the rat's nest of or congestion in the routing that may exist in certain areas of the board. We've, we've done some example boards uh, like you see here where we've used um, you know, tens or twenties of, of instances of a connector in various configurations, angles and uh, perpendicular to each other. Um, and showed how you can, you can utilize multiple connectors in a mezzanine application, still get them to mate up, um, even though um, tolerance stacking is, um, is something that, uh, you know, would logically say you can't do this. We, we've proven the, the effect that, the, that this can have and, uh, and how this can help you with your placements and optimization of your signals. Size and speed are only good if you can have a very reliable connection. So um, we've developed uh, connector systems that are mechanically and electrically reliable in a wide range of applications. So in thinking about IoT applications and the environments that they may be um, you know, uh, exposed to, you, you think about something as benign as a, as a home or an office where the temperature is controlled and humidity is, is uh, very minimal and no exposure to chemicals, or you've got something operating um, as a camera system on uh, a side of a building in uh, Wisconsin where it's maybe minus 20 degrees like it was last night. So you have to you have to have the ability to handle a wide range of temperatures, or maybe it's even on a production floor uh, or in a machine that's exposed to um, harsh chemicals or environmental conditions that, that may exist there. So we've got, we've got to develop solutions that fit in a wide range of applications, but also be easy for the operator to, to assemble uh, and connect together. And Lastly, making them foolproof uh, so we can avoid any accidental or incorrect plugging of devices. So the, the proof comes in in picking the right materials. So um, as these are SMT or surface mount uh, devices, you know, picking high temperature plastic materials that are able to withstand the latest reflow profiles that, that are required of this eco-friendly um, lead-free soldering. Um, but also being geometric, geometrically robust enough that they allow that the, uh, the, the lo location of the signal pads is precise enough that we can get a coplanarity down to less than um, 0.05 millimeters. So you, you've got um, a very uh, uh, unique surface or a very uh, inline surface uh, to solder to the printed circuit board. Um, the 
the ability to make long contact wipes. So having this uh, dual sided female contact that has a long range of connectivity within uh, to the male connector um, allows us to, to, um, to make for a very um, uh, secure connection over a long uh, Z axis. And when we can incorporate a lot of different uh, plating and uh, lubrication solutions for those high vibration environments where maybe fretting corrosion uh, is a concern. So we found that dual beam contacts or this two-sided uh, contact solution for, for the female spring is the, the most durable uh, solution that's, that's available. And what I mean by that is uh, the, the two-sided contact allows for um, a continuous connection to, to the male contact pin. In some single-sided uh, contacts, when we have an offset of, uh, of the two printed circuit boards, there could be a case where, where um, there is an intermittent signal uh, because of the single-sided uh, contact, a uh, single blade on beam type of contact system. So with a dual-sided contact, even though the board may move, you always have uh, at least one edge of the, the contact beam um, making connection with the, uh, the male side. So this is definitely uh, an advantage in those high vibration, um, ruggedized solutions that these IoT devices will eventually be placed in. When you're talking about the rugged solutions, uh, Jason, and the temperature range, what, what are the temperature ranges uh, that you're seeing in the industry now that are needed? So we design our connectors from minus 55 degrees C to uh, 150 degrees C uh, at a minimum. So um, that covers pretty much uh, most of the environments that um, we, can, we can see out there uh, in the space. Um, so I think that, that pretty much covers them. Yeah, and and what about the the cycle, the duty cycle for connection uh, in out cycles? I should say, what what are these typically designed for? What's really demanded in in industry now? Well, it it, it varies, right? If you're if you're um, uh, choosing a connector that is going to be plugged and unplugged uh, by the operator many times, uh, you need to make sure you choose the plating systems um, that. Uh, that can withstand that. So we have solutions that can can um, uh, handle up to 500 mating cycles, um, but we also employ lower um, uh, lower plating technologies like tin plating that maybe are only good for 10 or 15 mating cycles because that's all the the customer needs and they're not willing to uh, or don't don't need to to spend the extra money on a, a noble metal plating like gold or palladium uh, in order to to achieve those higher mating cycles. Um, but, you know, plating also has an impact on uh, the ability to withstand fretting corrosion. Um, and so it's really understanding about the application that the, uh, the customer is planning on using in, using the product in. So um, in addition to the, to the dual-sided spring contacts, um, we also look for solutions that are easy to assemble. So... Um, you know, having different variants of the same product family, whether they're color coded or uh, mechanically coded, um, allow you to to assure that you separate different connections that may be of different voltages or need to be um, to be isolated for safety requirements. So um, having uh, having versions that provide both a visual and a tactile um, feedback to the user uh, of that. Um, plugging operation is, is important. Um, polarization and blind mate features, so, uh, so that they can't be uh, oriented um, 180 degrees off of uh, the intended uh, area. So this pokey oak, this idea of mistake proofing, uh, the system is, is uh, definitely another area to, to think about. Um, also offering in like crimp connections, uh, solutions that um, have secondary locking to make sure that this uh, the contact stays in place, not only um, with a with a barb, but also features within the plastic housing that help lock the contact in place. And uh, this idea of terminal position assurance so that you've got this uh, securely um, 
connected device is definitely um, another area to to uh, to think about. We also uh, think it's very important that you think about um, solder anchors and ways to relieve some of the stress of plugging and unplugging these wire harnesses to connectors mounted to the printed circuit board. The, the pads for the signal contacts are um, the weakest point of, uh, of the connection. Um, but when we take the strain away from the mating process and into these solder anchors, you can eliminate the, the chance of the contacts peeling uh, off the board um, when someone yanks on the, uh, on the connectors. And that leads me to the last thing. You know, the users don't always read your instruction manuals. They really uh, will do their best to use and abuse your products and they'll find the weak spots in your designs. So finding uh, solutions or designing in solutions that uh, help to reduce the chance that, that uh, those type of um, uh, failures occur is, is definitely paramount. So Ernie believes these high-speed interfaces with small scalable footprints and improved uh, robustness and reliability are critical to most uh, new IoT deployments. When we look at the, the, the market space in general for IoT, there are, are, are lots of different applications that are out there. I just want to touch on four of them that I think are, are uh, interesting for, for this discussion today. Um, first being smart cities um, and buildings and homes. You know, we can think about um, uh, traffic routing where we have uh, a network of street level cameras and sensors that, that could help um, uh, interface with GPS systems to, to route you to where you need to be, to um, HVAC systems that have active energy management that help minimize the environmental impact of, uh, of, um, uh, of the buildings. And then things that are already in place that, that uh, you know of right now, but you know, your Alexa devices, your, your uh, appliances, your ring doorbells and things like that. Um, but on the manufacturing side, you, you, you can think about some of the, the real-time diagnostics and machine monitoring uh, systems that, um, that could definitely be employed. But one area that's um, up and coming that needs a lot of looking at is the inventory management. There was a survey done in uh, 2017 of, of small businesses, and I think it was the number was 86% of, of small businesses have no automated inventory tracking systems, and 62% of them still rely on pen and paper or spreadsheets to, to monitor their inventory. So as, um, as we become more sophisticated, the, the opportunity for managing inventory, controlling the return on the investment uh, that uh, businesses make, uh, understanding where um, where they can order more, how can they can hold uh, the right amount of inventory is going to be uh, an area for growth. Everybody hears about autonomous vehicles. That's definitely an area um, that that is is growing. But driver monitoring uh, and predictive maintenance are are two key areas that will really influence us in the future. And you think about how that may affect. Uh, your driving habits, um, you know, how often you change your oil, how, um, uh, how your insurance rates may, may ultimately um, be influenced by some of these um, monitoring solutions that are going to be out there. And lastly, in the healthcare side of things, how do we deal with, uh, with illness and treatment? So uh, that's an area of great growth. Yeah, which sectors do you see really growing for, for connectors? So um, the, we'll go into a bit about, uh, about, about that in the, the, the growth numbers, but um, certainly in um, the, the healthcare, there's a, a huge uh, growth uh, number there. Um, and also in um, these smart devices for uh, buildings and homes. If we, with, with the amount of information that's going to be available with the sensors and um, uh, and camera systems and, and things of that nature, we're going to have a huge amount of data, and we need to be able to make quick, reliable uh, decisions. So, 
I, I, I can think of an example with the smart smart buildings in in the parking parking garages. Um, in some of the airports, and uh, I've seen that, um, in, in malls and big malls, shopping areas, uh, they've started to employ these red and green lights above the parking spaces to indicate whether a parking space is available um, for you to park in. But imagine now that we've, we take that to the next level and not only is uh, there a light there, but um, you, as you're driving uh, down the street and, and your GPS knows you want to go to the mall, uh, it starts to identify where is a parking space that's available. Oh, it's on the fourth floor. It's on the third aisle, the second parking spot on the left. And you can even think about taking that even further back. Even you, you as you uh, make a, a, an appointment to, to go visit someone, um, maybe you make a reservation for that parking space and, and the, the traffic gets diverted uh, for other people who are going into that same parking garage so that you're not crossing paths with somebody else so that uh, you've got a smoother um, way into your parking space. The, the idea of these connected sensors and camera systems um, and, and lighting would all, uh, all take place uh, in the near future. And so we'll need connectors that work within the camera systems, whether the, uh, and then also with the different sensors that may be monitoring uh, your presence or, or uh, different environmental conditions to, to the data management. Who, how are we going to process this information together? So there's going to be um, connector solutions and, and, uh, for all those things. And, and again, we provide those fast, scalable, reliable solutions that, uh, that will help employ that. So the growth rates, you know, we see, you know, 18% uh, growth rate. Uh, for smart cities and smart buildings. And um, so this, this number is going to be growing at a very high uh, annual growth rate. On the smart factory, the smart factory of the future really is going to um, uh, utilize a lot of connector systems, whether it's in advanced manufacturing solutions that have robots and um, you know sensor systems that need to talk to the to the industrial ethernet, which you know will be the network of those machines and devices that are connected together and all sending, sending their data to the cloud for the data storage side of things. You know, we, we will have, um, have a lot more uh, solutions available to us because of the improved latency. So uh, the 5G systems and the, the IoT systems of the future will have um, shorter times, signal times, transmission times, uh, so the latency will be significantly reduced. The bandwidth, uh, the ability to send more information, uh, whether it's high definition video, uh, large chunks of, of data. Um, so you'll need connectors that way are able to withstand those high speeds and have the, the ability to block out uh, outside noise and interference with shielding. Um, and then lastly, the, the local data processing side of things. So uh, the concept of edge, edge networks and edge computing uh, where lo, uh, local decisions are made uh, as opposed to sending them up to a data center or uh, somewhere into the cloud to make the decision, the, the, the decisions are made on a local basis and then the cloud is used uh, primarily for uh, the data storage. So are some of these connectors already integrated with some sensors? I mean, it's what it looks like, sort of. So um, this connector system that we have here is a, as, uh, an M12. It's a standardized uh, sensor um, configuration. So um, uh, very common in the, in the industry for um, uh, sensor cabling. Uh, and then this is a, a tube. So we made a right angle version that is center mounted on a board uh, that would be uh, go into a sensor tube that may employ uh, a thermocouple, um, uh, a flow, a flow sensor of some kind, a proximity detector on on one end. Um, so this is just kind of an example of how how this type of connector could be used uh, in a sensor tube. So um, we'll have the smart factory of the future will be full of these embedded sensors working with machine vision systems. And in a, a new area of 
development is in the, the personal safety of the workers. So you can think of a, a where um, uh, a, an employee or a worker with uh, some sort of wearable device that may be um, monitoring blood pressure or temperature or heart rate, uh, um, environmental conditions that the, the employee is exposed to. And that communicating back to, um, to some cent uh, centralized system that's monitoring and, and controlling the output of the, of the equipment and can pull the, the full stop on, on a production line because um, operators are being exposed to harmful conditions or alerting, uh, alerting uh, medical personnel that uh, somebody is about to have a heart attack on the production floor and we need to, we need to send, uh, send help. So uh, there's, there's this increased um, emphasis on making quick, reliable decisions based on the data that's provided. For automotive applications, uh, there's uh, a number of advanced developments that, that have uh, taken place and then will continue to take place over the next decades. Um, over the last 20 years, car manufacturers have spent a lot of energy on producing or development time on producing uh, solutions for electric cars and hybrid uh, vehicle systems. But now um, there is a, an increased um, push for new systems that whether they're connected car or advanced driver assistance systems or ADAS systems or, or mobility solutions. So you can think about in this connected car, the, the, the idea of fleet, mat, um, fleet management where you can geofence where, where the vehicle is going or understand um, the, the, the coordinates of, of your fleet that's out there, your, your company cars or, or UPS delivery trucks. Um, the, having real-time um, diagnostics of the, of the equipment um, of the vehicle, you know, the uh, telemetrics, um, working with um, uh, your, your shop to, to come up with the right preventive maintenance schedules, those sort of things with the connected car. On the, the ADAS side, um, we already see a lot of this uh, starting to be deployed, the, the collision prevent, uh, prevention with the vehicles that are able to um, stop without you um, putting your foot on the brake because it senses a, a slowdown of the car in front of you. Um, automatic parking systems within vehicles and, and, and um, furthermore going to the, the complete hands-off driving uh, solutions. Do you see uh, particular um, challenges for connectors in the automotive environment? So uh, automotive um, is, is an area where um, there are certain regulations, whether it's um, US car for North American um, connector requirements, which is uh, um, a consortium of the, the big three automotive, uh, and they decide some of the critical parameters that connectors must uh, meet in order to be used in automotive applications. So making sure your connectors are uh, meet those specifications. In, in Europe, they have a, uh, a European consortium, um, I think it was founded uh, mostly by people from Volkswagen, um, and it's called the LV214. Um, and so that's another area uh, where we have to meet the requirements uh, of the industry. And that has to do with um, uh, vibration, um, uh, contact resistance, um, performance uh, in different uh, environmental conditions, temperature range, exposure to gases, uh, and that sort of thing. So, so what's the typical plating on those connectors that are used in automotive? Like, it's not tin, right? Well, uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of systems still use uh, tin connections, um, you know, with, with very high normal forces that uh, allow you to um, push away any sort of corrosion buildup that may occur in, uh, in a tin connector from the oxidation. Um, but there is uh, emphasis um, with different OEMs to um, use connectors with uh, durable gold plating or noble metal plating um, for those applications that require um, high vibration um, or for um, critical signal transmission. Um, they would still probably want to use a more um, noble metal uh, solution. So um, 
what we see traditionally in uh, automotive applications are a lot of wire to board solutions. Um, so whether it's crimp contacts to, to wire, plugging into connectors on the board or a uh, ribbon cable or um, IDC type of uh, connections or installation displacement connections. And the form factor can be very large, 2.54 millimeter pitch down to um, very small with um, you know, 1.27 millimeters or even uh, smaller pitch connectors um, attaching to the board. But we have, <clears throat> we have seen um, some new trends into having um, board to board connectors uh, inside of uh, automotive applications, whether that's for battery management systems or inverters or um, uh, turbochargers or that sort of thing. There is uh, definitely a uh, need for uh, board to board connections as well. The, uh, the last area that I wanted to, to chat about was the healthcare system, uh, the healthcare solutions for um, IoT devices. And the, we already, you already, maybe many of you already have these fitness wearables, whether it's your Apple Watch or some other uh, wearable device that can monitor your, your heart rate and, and how long you've been running and you know, GPS and, and, and that sort of thing. But um, there's going to be more and more of these wearable devices and home health monitoring uh, solutions, especially as as we continue in this um, uh, this pandemic age that we are in. Uh, the idea of telehealth and uh, being able to conduct virtual office visits uh, with your doctor um, is going to be increasing. So. With that, you, there are going to be more devices that um, will become uh, home monitors um, where you can then connect them up to uh, a system um, that the doctor can, can monitor and, and uh, interpret the data. But this is going to also change um, how our office visits uh, um, happen. You know, when we go to the doctor office, more and more of the devices are going to become uh, interconnected, whether it's from taking your temperature to your, your x-rays all being um, sent directly uh, to a centralized location where they can concatenate all the data together into your, your medical file where the doctor can read it on a tablet um, you know, um, as you're sitting there in the, in the doctor's office. So, um, and we know that this area is going to grow at a significant rate. Um, you look at the annual growth rate of about 30% uh, every year. You know, if we look at, um, in 20 years from now, in the year 2040, one in five Americans will be over the age of 65. And you compare that to 20 years ago in 2000, where that number was more like one in nine or one in 10 uh, Americans were over the age of 65. And by 20, 2040, there's gonna be over 80 million Americans that are over 65 years of age. So, um, the, the need for um, healthcare devices um, that, that work remotely uh, and efficiently um, are, is, is definitely going to increase for the, for the future. So I'd like to, to, to close um, my talk here. Hopefully I'm not too much over time, but um, the, the whole idea of uh, internet of things really started with, with smartphones um, and uh, now that there's over 3 billion smartphones and smart devices in use today and billions more on the way in the next decade to, to come with 5G deployment, you can see how um, this new technology will, will develop and uncover new techno technological advances that we can only dream of right now. So interconnect will continue to evolve as the technology grows and we look forward to seeing what what's beyond 5G and, and, and IoT, whether that's the, the next generation, the 6G solutions that, that will be out there. Ernie will be here providing you those fast, scalable and reliable solutions for the next industrial revolution. With that, I'd like to open it up with any questions that anybody has. Do you, sorry, there I am, I'm muted. Uh, would you like to just uh, kind of just go over your categories of uh, connectors really quick, just to spur on any any questions? Sure. Well, we we included in the into the um, 
uh, presentation. Um, Perfect. Uh, this, <laughs> these links to, um, to some of the products that we showed pictures of. So hopefully you can follow along the picture and, uh, and find the products there, whether they're wire to board or board to board. And there's also then um, different links at the bottom uh, of the page where you can go and see, uh, get more information, whether it's uh, watch a video about the product or see the, the catalog information. And um, so we have talked about a number of the, the wire to board, board to board for high speed type of ac applications. Um, we have a, a, a advanced offering of wire to board solutions in our bridge product family um, and some of the board to board mezzanine, very small form factor connector systems. So um, again, this is all included at the end uh, of the presentation um, and you know, look forward to you guys checking out those links and offering any uh, questions that you may have. Yeah, thank you. Jason, this is very informative. I particularly like these uh, these links that you've added. Uh, one of the questions that that I had in my mind was uh, custom colors on some of the connectors. You got the pokey oak to make sure that they're only made one way. Uh, can you also do uh, custom colors by chance? Or yeah, we have custom connectors. Yes, um, obviously we we look at those and and see what the opportunity arises. You know. Um, uh, the, the colors, we do have a, a standard set of colors, but um, since this is, uh, uses readily available plastic and, and uh, dyes and, and, and different colors, we could uh, certainly work on uh, different color coatings that, that may be specific to a customer application. Obviously, so we, have, uh, <clears throat> we have a question here. Are you seeing any design, act, uh, in, design in activity yet on medical? Uh, or industrial space for any or any connectors in the 5G space. So this is 5G space for medical and industrial, all, all combined. So, um, you know, 5G on, it, on its own is, is one thing, but uh, as it pertains to IoT um, in industrial and uh, medical, for sure, we, we see, um, we've seen uh, deployments of products and, and applications um, for our connectors. So which products are those that are doing well in medical industrial for, you know, for 5G implementation? So um, when we talk about um, the uh, in industrial areas, uh, products like our, our MicroSpeed, um, which would be uh, used in, in uh, some of the PLC type of uh, devices and um, in the automation side of of uh, the industrial space. Um, that is uh, definitely a, a connector system that is employed uh, tremendously today. Um, on the, the healthcare, healthcare side of things, um, board to, to backplane type of connectors uh, like our SMC product line um, um, do have um, applications. Can't go into specifics about them, but yeah, we, we do have them. Uh, board to backplane, you said. Yeah, correct. Okay. okay, that was uh, for one of the, the attendees here. Okay. Yep. Any other questions or challenges that folks have on a, a project right now that you're looking for some kind of connector or have a, a particular connector problem that needs support, let us know. Uh, Patty, is there anything you would like to add here on anything that you're hearing about on, on trends uh, for connectors? Um, no, I think, you know, the, the key thing you know, is what we have been focusing on is miniaturization and robust. So I think those are the things that, um, you know, as, as the IoT moves out into different, um, different spheres, you know, they're going to be key to making sure that your systems continue to work in any kind of application. Great. Uh, I, I really don't have any other questions on my side. I don't know if you have anything else you want to add, Jason or Caroline, on anything that you've seen. I've been monitoring the chat box, so there haven't been a whole lot of questions, so they must have done a good job. Or everybody's all set with connectors, one or the other. Yeah, a, qu a question did just come in, Aparna. Um, oh, yes, here it is. Uh, what is the maximum pin count we can get from the mini bridge or maxi bridge? 
So um, on our mini bridge product family, so I'll show you that. Um, so um, we can do up to 12 position in the mini bridge. Um, so that's, uh, that's that product family. On the maxi bridge, we can do 20 position uh, in a dual row. So maxi bridge is uh, this connector. Uh, in the single row, it's um, uh, 10, uh, sorry, 10 position. So while we have a few minutes, uh, maybe it just makes sense to uh, go through some of the major products that you do have in the Ernie family. So everybody's familiar with, uh, with what you have to offer. Sure. Um, and we, uh, so uh, wire to board connectors, uh, like our Maxi Bridge product family here. Um, it's a uh, crimp connector, crimp contact uh, wire to board, um, 2.54 millimeter pitch, um, able to handle a uh, large amount of currents up to 12 amps, um, wire gauges uh, 18 to 26. Um, I talked about those um, different uh, performance specifications for automotive. So this, uh, this meets those LV214 and US car um, uh, requirements. So uh, on the ZD product family, this is a uh, high speed connector system with um, the ability to transmit 25 gigabit per second into a single differential, uh, differential pair. So this is a uh, four pairs, uh, so it's four differential pairs um, vertically and horizontally, it's uh, 10 rows. So this has got 40 differential signal pairs uh, per connector. So um, uh, that's this type of connector system. This is um, available in you know, a variety of different pin, uh, pin variations. Um, you know, uh, it's um, our highest speed connector system. It's kind of a derivative of uh, some of the legacy DIN and hard metric uh, compact PCI type of connectors. This is the, was the evolution beyond that. And we continue to evolve this connector system. Um, uh, in the wire to board family, um, we also have a two millimeter pitch connector, which is our iBridge Ultra. Um, a little bit smaller form factor, and so it's got a little uh, uses smaller wire gauges, so it's got a little bit smaller uh, current, but still able to handle uh, a nice amount of current. Uh, it is in tin, so it is an economical um, solution, um, not really rated for a lot of uh, mating cycles because of the the plating uh, system employed, but it is also um, um, automotive um, grade does yeah. provide with uh, terminal position assurance or this uh, ability to, once you've crimped the contact and put it into the housing, you can assure that the contact is, uh, is locked into place and not gonna uh, come out. So we have a question here, uh, which connector series are suitable for robotic, cobotic assisted blind mating of connectors? So uh, Connectors that we have that have the, the best uh, blind mating, uh, I guess it's just going to depend on if you're doing um, wire to board, which I'd probably think that maybe that may be where you're to go. Um, um, our uh, Maxi Bridge has versions that, uh, that are, have some advanced features on it for um, improved um, um, scoop proofing so that they're, um, we call it Koshiri, so it doesn't, uh, you don't, um, accidentally hit the, the male contact pins. Um, there is some good lead in in that product family, but in our mini bridge product family, which is a little bit smaller, we have um, blind mate and features um, on this uh, connector that help, um, help to do the guidance um, as well from a wire to board perspective. So that would be robot, at, ro robot inserted. So the robot would actually do the insertion. Yes, so um, I'm not sure how, how tightly they can control the robotic movements, but um, you know, these can withstand like close to um, close to a millimeter of misalignment before they uh, well, guide yeah. and put it into into place. And I see you have the generous lead-ins on the terminal pins, uh, the the holes there. Yeah, yeah. So we have uh, we have some orientation features and uh, chamfers uh, on the the uh, the female and on the the male side to to help. Um, guide it in to the correct position. Hopefully that we, we also have in our, our microspeed product family, 
um, blind meat, uh, blind mate um, features that um, uh, for mezzanine applications or coplanar applications the, where um, two, uh, two boards need to be made it together, um, have some advanced um, features and solutions that, that are available there. Well, that'll be for robotic assembly that's uh, coming up very strong with that uh, robotic uh, smart manufacturing facilities now. Yeah. So good, good question. Um, and then I guess uh, I think we've got maybe these last two things here, power elements. So bringing very large power uh, to the printed circuit board, um, these, uh, these components would be press fit into the printed circuit board um, and have terminal um, lugs or sockets that you can um, uh, that you can cable directly up to with a screw or a nut um, uh, allow you to carry up to 500 amps depending on the size of these um, and uh, a great way for you to connect bus bars and um, other high power devices to your printed circuit board and then I think uh, well, maybe one of the last things here is the M8 M12 so these are specific to industrial automation uh, applications as a standard around, uh, there's an IEC standard around these connector designs. Um, and these are all um, made to work with um, components, uh, nut panel mount nuts and uh, harnesses that uh, make them IP65 and 67 rated. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, I think, uh, and then what people traditionally know us for is our, our backplane connector systems, the, the DIN connector systems that, um, that Ernie developed in the, 19, <clears throat> the 1960s and uh, continues to support to this day. Um, wide range of products, um, very robust connector systems um, that um, just really have stand, stood, the, stand up, stood the, the test of time here and uh, continue to be designed in. I think Great. that's, we're right at the, the end now, I guess. Yep. Well, thank you so much. I will turn it back over to Caroline. Really appreciate the questions. Uh, everybody will get uh, the presentation and the video at the end. Uh, we we'll just turn it back over to Caroline. And th thank you, Jason and Patty. Thanks so much, Aparna. Okay. Yes, you. just echoing Aparna. Thank you so much to Jason, Patty, and for the Ernie team for being with us today. As Aparna mentioned, you will receive the presentation and the recording. Um, those will be on the Riot YouTube channel and the meetup page on which you registered. I do encourage you, if you have additional questions, um, please reach out to the Ernie team. Please reach out to Aparna at Aurora Group. You can always reach out to myself or anyone on the Riot team, and we'll be happy to connect you. Um, but thanks again, everybody. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. everyone. Thank you.